All right, Sam. Welcome back to the show, man. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I want to make you like a regular. Every time I get a chance to put the mics on and the cameras on, like I want to make sure that Sam the plumber comes by and just drop some knowledge here is what's going on. You're too kind, man. You to want to have me for multiple times. Uh, That's great. You're you're a wealth of knowledge, man. Like I'm not saying that I'm ever going to absorb everything that you tell me, but the thing is you're a wealth of knowledge, and I'm sure that you get a lot of kids reaching out to you as well too. I think everybody that I've ever interviewed knows who you are. Wow. That's that's really Honestly. great. I, I try to put the the word out there, not so much for my name. Well, you know, we're gonna we're gonna push our name, Sam the Plumber and stuff. But you know, and then the other people that are really great to us, manufacturers wise, we're gonna put that out as well. But these younger kids that are getting into there and they said they've heard of me as that's awesome because you know I've spoke at a couple of schools for career night and. A lot of kids didn't know to get into the trade and kind of that route and stuff. And I said, are they Why actively not? listening to you? Are they taking notes? Are they aware of the possibilities? I think in the last couple of years, a lot of kids have way more knowledge about the trades than it, they have than when you the got decade in. before. Oh, so, even that recent, huh? Like, wow. Yeah, like I, I'm just saying that there's so much knowledge. There's, now there's government grants to take some of these kids on. You know, the government's helping to subsidize a bit of the, well, the expense for a small business, a blue-collar small business. We're a small business. We only got two trucks. You got two trucks? How many employees? How many kids? Uh, 20 (laughs) employees and one (laughs) Honda Civic. No, just kidding. So Share the information. We're obviously, everyone knows that we're at the doll booth at CMPX show 2024, booth number 903. They've been kind enough to let us get this little stage here, which is great. And we just took parts of the studio from Oakville there and we brought them over here and we sit them down. But we got Sam the Plumber here on IG. Also the website, what is it? It's uh, Sam the Plumber Oakville. Oakville. And I, I guess just before we got started, you were talking about how you're just starting jobs, projects that were booked a year ago, a year more, a year plus ago. Mm, well, they were from last year. So we have two builds that we haven't even started yet, but they were signed back to us and confirmed in 23. So November, December, I think it was. So we've we've priced a few houses for this year as well, and we're just waiting to hear back on some of them. But. There's still, I think, what I'm getting at is still a bit of a backlog from the year before and people wanted to get things done. and Financial backlog or just permit backlog or material backlog, all three? I don't think it's a material backlog anymore, but the first two, absolutely. I think it's a combination of the two of them. I think okay. material has really caught up. Nobody's waiting for any lumber or trusses from that we were doing well, up to Not now. 12 months ago. Yeah. You know? It was pretty crazy back then. Yeah. But right now, I think material is caught up. There's no shortage, even in our pipes. I was starting to squirrel up some pipes. How am I supposed to do a house if I didn't have pipes? So we're not doing that right now. Everybody's got Do you ever catch yourself, Sam, sometimes on the job site where you're like, how many years have you been in the business now? 36. You ever catch yourself and try to recollect what it used to be like and how it is today? 100%. I think I tell my boys every day. <laughs> it used to be this way. Exactly. You guys have it so good. It used to be this way. We didn't have any press. Oh, my god. We didn't have any pack outs. We didn't have any Milwaukee tools, man. No, no nothing. No, we had copper. We had a torch. And we had a lot of burns on our hands. Every time you got burnt, the journey would say, it's not going to be your last time. <laughs> That's what he always hear? Yeah, for sure. Because you, you're going to keep doing that stuff. And you're going to burn your hands and stuff. But now there's so much technology out there, you know, with this... Uh, Pex pipe, you can really. What's, what's, what's the scars you get from Pex pipe? No, not from copper, from solder. No, 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 no. But like, what do you get from Pex? Nothing. You don't get any. Uh, you don't, what do you get? You get maybe a little bit of wrist action. Yeah, that you, yeah, yeah, That's a little sore, but that's all. any any plumber is going to have some crazy freakish <laughs> forearms. Popeye that, forearms, eh? Yeah, I don't know. It's just a part of the trade with the plumbing. You get these weird forearms. I guess from wrenches or just saws all and and stuff like that. So you form different parts of your body with different muscles for different traits. Totally. It's always the case. Like that, right? So you're going to crimp it. You got the muscle to do it anyways. And so it works pretty good. But I did try the battery crimper. It's a little too big. You know? Battery crimper? So it's from it, Milwaukee? Yeah. So it's it, it crimps. It just seems, that's a, seems it's, heavier. It's just like a press tool. It actually looks like a press tool. It's very similar, but you can't press copper with it, but you can only press so of to speak, course. press ring. Why would you want to make a tool that would press both? Right. That makes no sense. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> so the 
The one for Pax B for the battery is about $1,000, and the other one's $2,000. Oh, <laughs> so, man. That's anyways. Milwaukee's R&D department just getting a little local. Well, uh, you know what? For sure, you can talk about the manufacturers and the tools, but I'll tell you, those guys are making it a lot easier for us these they're days. They're saving your bodies. For sure. Totally they're saving they about, you know, yes. you got a few hundred dollars in, in money you're investing in the tool, but that tool... You know, if you buy the better end of stuff, the higher end of the stuff, you can drop it a couple of times. It's still gonna, it's still gonna do it. But at the end of the day, you gotta, you gotta lube it. You gotta clean it. You gotta, and most people don't really do that. They just say, oh, it doesn't work after a year and a half. I've been drilling sand for the last year and a half, and complain and stuff. But it's all about TLC. Have they taken care of you guys with the clips? Because I know the electricians have their battery powered clip system now for all their cabling, but they don't have clips for your pecs now. Oh. Have they designed an automatic clip? It's just still hammer and nail, right? It's hammer still clip. still a hammer and clip. There's a, we smash it in with a hammer. But and they stuff. have it for the hydronics, don't they? They have that little gun, that little tool that can staple all the hydronic lines. I don't know. What are you talking about? Like a stapler that you can put? On? I haven't even seen it, it's but like a maybe crown stapler it, on it. Probably. I just assume with your pex lines, you guys are constantly putting those clips. To be honest with you, I haven't even seen that thing. So I bet you it's an R and D right now. Eh, maybe it has to be. Maybe. Milwaukee's working on that one. They maybe. have to be, man. Yeah. So you tell the kids, they, they, but it's good to educate them on that, right? To understand where it came from. Oh, for sure. It's, uh, knowledge is key. Without knowing about the tool, how you even know it, it's out there to want to go buy it. So you got to get the word out and, you know, and then people can understand it. How are the clients these days? I know that I was passing by that one job site you were showing me and you, you, had, a, you had a minor issue with the toilets and I agreed with you on it. But I mean, like we were seeing all kinds of plumbing action going on there and clients are asking for so much stuff nowadays. It's gone are the days when you got started when it was like really simple, man. Shower, toe tester. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's it. that's a really good topic, Manny, because that's what it was back in the day. When, when I started in 1988, somebody once said they wanted a shower. You knew they were getting a mowing shower valve with one head <laughs> and a friggin' tub spout with a diverter. Uh, there was some of the higher and end that stuff. That was high then. end stuff. Right? Yeah, and that was well, that was the go to stuff. There was polish, chrome, some chrome other polish, whatever. Right, yeah. and, and chrome's still in, as far as I'm concerned. You know, it's I thought it was rose gold. I thought it was all rose gold these days. Rose gold is black, black is done. and chrome. Those are the three Those colors. Are the three. Those are the three colors that are pretty much dominant in this year. But then you get variations from that gold. You can get brushed gold. You get this gold. Different manufacturers have different names. They can't use the same name as the other manufacturers. So. Colors are great. I like black, but I'm telling you, chrome is still great. The most inexpensive one is chrome, and it looks great. And it lasts, and, and it's it easy lasts. to keep clean. 100%. I mean, black is a funny animal. It depends on whose it is. It scratches just, quick, too. you got to be careful with that black. You put the pliers marks, on it. 100% water marks. Hard water. Yep, for All sure. the calcium on it. Black will not be. I always said the best-looking car is a black car on the day that you wash it, and then the next day, it's the dirtiest car because it shows everything. Because it shows everything. Absolutely. That's why I explain to any client that's always telling me let's go with black fixtures i go do you have a black car yeah <laughs> how often do you keep it clean <laughs> a lot of people got a black car <laughs> it's just how it is but i mean like do you think that there's too many options in the market right nowadays like, oh 100 confusion is at that point i'm gonna say there's a hundred percent that's such a great question because judging, i think there's way too many i think the best way to answer that is when i first started like we were talking about joking about the moen single head and toe tester and uh, over the years, you know, everybody um, started making their own kind of shower systems and stuff. And it's great. And there's some really good ones out there. You know, uh, Ryo Bell, House of Roll. Yeah. It's one of my faves. I mean, not just that it's Canadian, but it's, it's easy to service. And there's one thing sticking out of the wall. So you're going to pay your plumber to rough in one valve that has three things. On, off, temperature, and diverter in one control. By Ryo Bell. It's a good idea, man. Right. It makes sense. So then if you don't want that, you want the old style, you want the other knob, volume controls, different uh, diverters and stuff. Well, guess what? You're going to pay them more money to buy all the extra parts. You're going to pay the plumber more money, more money to install. Yeah. My quotes are based on one shower valve to rough it in. Yeah. I'm, I'm a fair guy. I'm not going to charge you for three volume controls and six heads when we're only doing two and one body. So anyways, getting back to... The other stuff, there's a lot of knockoffs. People are going online to buy stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm okay with online purchases. I'm not. I can't stand Wayfair. I can't stand Amazon. Let me, Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. So 
I'm going to say I, I am an online purchaser sometimes when I need stuff. It's great. Oh, no, I love that too. Yeah, but and so some of these no-name things that you don't know, I only tell people don't get something that you don't know that is not based in North America and stick it behind a wall and tile over top of it. You want to buy a, I call them no-name offshore product and it's just a faucet, no problem. That thing's going to die one day. Everything mechanical breaks down one day. So when it does and there's no replacement part for it, and I've been in that situation, it's disposable. I have to tell the customer there's no replacement cartridge. I don't know what the name of this thing is. Nobody has one. Nobody knows what it is. And they're saying it's an offshore product. And you guys just got it maybe on online or some company or something. So I have to cut it out and, and, and throw it out and replace it. But that's fine on a countertop. But behind a wall, why would you? Like, why Why would you? You're like looking in the closet in the room yeah, next to it. You have to go behind. You don't want to smash this, tile. You don't want to deal with any of this I'm going to cut it open behind. You like, can do it from the front, but you know, are, it's, are it's you, one or the other. Are you a fan of Kohler? I am a fan of Kohler. Uh, the other thing with Kohler is like, I, I just, uh, I'm a pretty blunt guy. Kohler's all threaded. It's all thread yeah, stuff. Yeah. I got to buy all the adapters. I got to thread yep. it. It's going to take me hours to do it. And guess what? I tell people when you go buying Kohler, I'm going to charge you for the time and the adapters that I have to get for it. If you can't give me a shower I valve agree. that is compatible, in our quota says we're gonna do PEX A, PEX B, whatever we're gonna do. We need that shower valve to be to have the adapters onto it. And some of the better companies can have the shower valve with the adapters on from manufacturer, not this threaded stuff that you know was invented in it's the in the a hundred years ago. The only reason I bring it up is because I personally have like a Kohler and and I I think it was about 11 years later. So I, I did a Frankenstein thing. You remember Kohler when they had, uh, no, no, uh, let me get to the bathtub and then a sink. You remember when Kohler had the carbon faucet? Carbon? Yeah, that, that, no. It was like a joint thing. It was like, it almost looked like a braided line and it had elbows on it and it was a really funky looking kitchen oh, faucet. Oh, the kitchen faucet. Yes, I think I remember that one. So yeah. I did a Frankenstein thing where I liked the joystick of it. Yeah. So it was just a very joystick. Cool. It was a very cool joystick. So I actually MacGyvered a joystick with a tall faucet on it so i did it on my own i explained it i explained it to kohler i'm gonna do this they're like if you do this you're gonna avoid the warranty i got the t fitting the brass fitting i got all i made it work it didn't leak it was all perfect but now you fast forward 11 years and the joystick goes Mm. and it's not working anymore so something's broken so i call kohler up and i'm like guys my joystick's gone it's like yeah 11 years old uh, let me know the parts to fix it. I got to fix no, it. No, no. So she says, okay, well, hang on a sec. Let me just email you. Here is, is this the right part? I'm going, yeah. She ships me the cartridge and the new joystick. Oh, yeah. I free un- of charge. I unthread it, free of charge. And I put the new one in. Works beautifully again. Yeah, that's perfect. And that's a, that's a manufacturer that really stands behind they their stand product. They stand behind their product. Just send it over to them. I we always it. tell people to set, if you're the homeowner, you call them. You call them. Because you're probably going to get them for free. Don't let the plumber go. He might get them for free. I'm not saying that some people do this, but I've heard that they'll get free parts and then charge the customer for it. Yeah, I know. You they'll know, do you don't want to do that. No. You, you know, I tell people, listen, you're the homeowner. Give me your home address. They will ship it right to you. Any reputable uh, manufacturer based in North America will do that. And maybe some from the other side of the world well, too. Like, I don't know. My point is like, you bring up a really good point is that it doesn't matter how beautiful that bathroom is, that setup, that kitchen, whatever it is. At some point that faucet, that fixture, that something is going to fail and need something. So One if you million want percent. to cheap out at the beginning, find something that's no name, what are you going to do? Are you going to break tile at that point? You're going to try to figure out how to get back in there and cut it out? Like, what are you going to do? So I know a lot of people like to use the big oval hole on the top. Say you can't get in behind. The, the frisbee? A, You're talking about the frisbee. Okay, the frisbee. I call it the WWE <laughs> wrestling belt, okay? so That's what I'm going to call it from now on. It looks massive, man. So I, so I prefer to, to cut a hole behind. Um, not that I don't like, I don't really like to work in a swirl hole, but if I have to, I will, but I'm going to cut it open from the back. It you know, if sense. it's a closet, it's just drywall. It makes more you sense. can just screw that. You don't need to do plastering to put it back on, but you're going to go out there. You can take that circle out and, and put it on there. But some faucets ha- are really old school. So the, the, the walls are from the sixties. You're going to have to use the WWE belt and put it on there. The number WWE one champion, I know, eh? champion. 
<laughs> you but, could put your loofah brushes on the side yeah. or something. <laughs> yeah, just make it decorative, make it look good. But um, yeah, I mean. But these uh, are all the things that I guess homeowners don't think about. I guess new trades that coming into the industry don't think about. They just think about the shiny new coming out of a box well, and all of a sudden I'm going to install this. To be honest with you, I don't know why the homeowner really would have to. They can do... Um, they can uh, they have google so they can search it but they don't really need to know ins and outs of everything they're pretty busy as it is what they need to do is to hire the right trades and yes. if they hired me yes. i would guide them i tell people with all these we do custom homes and we do all these homes and i have i'm almost adamant now that i need three things sent to me and one of them is a fixture book and i like to have it before let me see what kind of manufacturers you think in you know and let me see what you want to do and stuff you know can i save you some money on this you know that if you do this it's going to look like this and that's where the homeowner should really look into the value is hire the right trade don't go for the cheapest plumber don't go for the cheapest electrician or anything like that and don't that if we're a difference of two thousand dollars and you want to cheap out save that two grand two grand's a lot of money yeah but i'm going to guarantee you that's if for a whole home that $2,000 might come back to bite you in the ass and you're going to probably spend a lot more than $2,000. You're going to have problems for the next few years. You could have some problems if they didn't do it right. And you know when those problems happen? On a Friday night, yep. Sunday, some guy comes in and charges them three times the rate to come and fix it. because when there's a rough to... patch in the marriage. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, there's all kind... Are you seeing more of these fixture books? Because I love the idea of a fixture book. Oh, is it, are, is it from the homeowner or is it from the designer? I don't care who it comes from. It, just as long there, as it shows somebody's up. Somebody's going to make me one. Okay. You want me to come to your house? You want the room, yeah. faucet, there's... toilet, shower, whatever. Absolutely. So what it's called, it's, I call it the fixture book. Some other uh, companies call it the a schedule or whatever they want to call it. But here's the scoop. Plumbing, plumbing and residential, there is no, they show a toilet on the second floor and they don't tell us how to get it down there. Plumbing and electrical, there's no design. We're, we are completely design build. HVAC, yeah, yeah. you know, they work hard too, but their HVAC uh, a says design. the size of it yeah. and it says where it's got to go. Yes. There's no questions. Just run it that way so you guys need to figure out that whole path what i'm getting at is i need three emails the first one i'm going to tell you is an email with the address of the house and it's called the fixture book and that fixture book will contain the manufacturer and model number per fixture per room so bedroom number two has a three piece and we're going with this toilet this faucet this sink this shower valve and these two heads Bedroom number four has this. So we want a schedule and we don't care where it comes from. We've had people say, oh, our supplier doesn't do a fixture book. And uh, I said, so you guys do it. You can, you can you do it at night. Spent the time at night while you're watching The Bachelorette and right. you guys were deciding on which fixtures to go with. Right. You've already chosen your fixture book. You right. just, just need to make a copy and just, send it. Just send a copy. I'm, I'm not asking for it super nice PDF or something. I'll take scratch notes. Write it on a friggin' napkin that you had. Just tell me what you're doing. Manufacturer. I'll make it work. Model. Yeah. So Where it's going. Th that's the key. Manufacturer and model number per fixture. Now, I've had some people go to some of these little boutiques, and they said, it doesn't really have a model number. It just has a name or something. I said, well, I think you should be a little bit beware of that first off. That's a red flag right there. Yeah. You need a manufacturer and model number, and you kind of want them based in North America. It's just so you can have a phone call to call them up and say, hey, it's five years, it's leaking now, can I get a new part? Can I buy a new part? You know, if they give you a free one, that's great. The second thing that we need is a cabinet specs for a custom home. We want a cabinet specs per room. And I don't want the, from the wall to the center of the faucet. I'm not an electrician. I don't care where the center is to put my light fixture in the middle. I want to know the left side of the gable and the right side of the gable of that box. Yeah. And I'll decide where the plumbing's gonna come through. Yeah. I've had these high-end cabinet companies and I had my drain off center by the five inches that I do because I swing it. And they said, the drain's in the wrong spot. And I said, what? I tried to explain to him on the phone that- But you're swinging, can you tell people why you're swinging it though? Absolutely. So the reason why I swing it, because every sink, if you look at a rectangle <clears throat> sink, could be dead center of the drain or the drain could be center back. Yes. And if you put the drain center on that drain and you're center back, your P-trap's gonna be some Frankenstein looking curve trying to get around there. You're gonna be hooked and you're gonna be sweating trying to figure out how to hook this up. Where I find is most of the cabinets now have drawers. So what I do is here's the center of the sink. Smart. I put it off to the side and yeah. when I glue my trap in, I don't go straight. I glue my trap in from the beginning sideways on the back wall. 
And then we come up and we pick up the sensor. What does that do, Sam? It gives you a rectangle drawer instead of an <laughs> ugly ass C drawer that you can only put toothbrushes on either Bring side. Bring in the jigsaw. It. Let me cut a little notch out of here that's yeah. just going to magically fit around this P trap that's centered. We've had some. I we've know. had some millwork companies yeah, that I actually cut the center out before I even did it, and I did it back there, and they had to replace the. The drawers they because said, it was like there's a hole here now yeah <laughs> something's falling through all the time it gets back to you just hire the right trades we'll talk about it let me see what it is and the third and final email that we need we need an appliance specs yeah. we need appliance specs now i need to know if the fridge and freezer call for water now i need to know like this house we're doing it's got a twenty five thousand dollars stove it requires water there's a steam feature and they have a steam wall oven that also takes water so I have two ovens in the kitchen that take what you imagine Special finishing in, the job. In, in wall espresso machine or cafe station. Eight thousand dollars and you need that water line. Sometimes yeah. they need a drain. They always so. forget the water line. Right. Always and, forget. And so it. who looks like a doofus cutting open drywall? The plumber, because not they that he didn't miss it, they didn't, the they didn't tell him. They didn't tell him. They didn't tell him that they bought the eight thousand dollar beautiful coffee machine that requires water and a drain. Now what are you going to do? Now you're going to cut open the wall. Now you're going to be subjected to looking like that. I tell people, I've had people say, it's okay, Sam. If it's an extra later, I'll pay the extra 200 to get you here. It's not the extra thing. It's It's the headache of damaging work that's already been performed. Right. And I'm going to sign my name to it. What I've built is Sam the plumber. Just give me the three things that I need. And I guarantee you it'll be a smooth process. And you'll make the final decision. I will say to you, maybe don't buy this. But if you do, that's fine. I'm not one of these to dictate, oh, it's made offshore and I'm not going to install it. I will no, install no, it, but no, I'm going to no. send them an email and say I'm only going to install it once. There's a we have notation to do it twice, attached to yeah, it. Yeah, you've got to know that. if it doesn't work properly and you need a truck. You're being hired because it. of your skill and your experience and what you know is good. You're not dismissing any product. You're Absolutely. educating every product. I'm letting them know I'm only doing it once. And if I got to do it twice, you're going to pay me twice. To do it. This quote is based on doing everything once, not twice. So we try to be reasonable. But, Manny, I we're wanna, on a job. We're small it, jobs. I we do. let them go. We, we don't comes, charge for everything because people, GCs don't like the extra charge. But just stupid little things like that can be avoided. Why yeah. not? 100%. I want to interview a GC one day on the show that has not cut out any drywall after Right, those stages. Right. Well, I'm gonna tell you the ones that have, and I've I've got a few GCs that we actually he they have a few of the same trades, me being one of them, and we see each other all on the same job. We've done like seven houses together, and that GC has not cut and opened any walls because he's paid the, for the proper trades that anything arises. Man, when I see something, I, I give him a call. I say, hey, listen, this is gonna be a bit of a problem and stuff. We try to revert the. Uh, we try to. Uh, get away from any problems. There's going to be challenges. You just don't want more. You know. Just what are some of the things that you're seeing? I remember that I was doing a project and uh, we were dealing with a living wall. And so all of a sudden the plumber got involved, right? Because obviously you have to yeah, bring a source, sure, right. but you also have to have a drain. Yeah. Then you have to have a trap seal primer for that drain because right. that drain is not constantly being replenished or what have you. But ultimately it was kibosh because of the expense of the actual plants and and the pot the, uh, the planners right right so they just said we're gonna put on hold and it was such a devastating put on hold moment because you had a stub out for the water supply mm. you know what i mean it's just gonna sit there and you're right. like, okay well i thought you guys wanted to do this green wall which was such an amazing idea and you wanted amazing. to add to the house and breathability and yeah you know filter your air inside here yeah. which is great but never did it and i was like i understood it you're getting a lot more clients coming up with i mean there's like steam showers you're getting saunas you guys are getting involved and like i the, the espresso in, is is the one i know the mealy i know that i i know i go to hanson machine, yeah. and i go to the beautiful showroom. machine it's a beautiful machine it's a like, ludicrously expensive machine but it's nice it's so nice i know <laughs> push of a button what flavor what size what kind it is so nice yeah. but it's so expensive but then yeah water source but then i guess what else are, are we going to get to a point where you're going to get involved with mist lines over the deck or yeah, something like that? That's or? a really good point. So when I found the first water line to a dryer, I was thinking, holy, what is this what world is coming on? to? We yeah. need water in the dryer. I thought we wanted to dry it and not make it wet. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, I'm a plumber. I'm not a friggin' no, scholar no, or nothing. We steam. So I had to steam. find out. And then steam, anti-wrinkle, yes. little water line. I was like, okay. But, you know, um, recently has been a water line to the uh, gas stove um, for the oven. So they have the cooktop, but they, we had to put a water line on this. This is a mealy uh, stove. I think it's a six burner and a, I think it's a dual 
oven on the oven. bottom. But there, we got to hook up a water line to the bottom because you can hit a program, put a chicken in there, and it's going to shoot some water and make it mist and super juicy. Just like the wall oven that's three feet over that also needs a water line and a drain to the wall oven because it's a steam oven. Both are steam ovens. So are you, is it mechanically speaking the same thing as a dishwasher, I guess? So you're... Yeah, you need a drain and a water line. Wow. Oh, yeah. That's all news to me. Yeah, same size too, three eighths, not like a fridge quarter inch. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You need, a, uh, you need a little valve down there and the stove has a mister and the wall oven, the steam oven, they're both steam ovens, has, also has that. So, yeah, listen, I don't have one. I only hooked them up, but I think... I think what it does is it. Uh, it really I haven't. I haven't tasted the chicken yet, so I don't know. Who doesn't like dry? Nobody likes dry no, chicken. But, get, but if I it's making this, juicier, then sure, great. Will it work for turkey? I guess it kind of makes sense to do that. But I think everything. Um, pot uh, pot fillers. Hundred percent pot fillers. Million percent of pot fillers. Us Italians like to boil a lot of water, or even if you like corn, you got to fill a pot. <sighs> I mean, if the if I 100 percent agree with pot if fillers. The, if the sink is on the same line, if the sink is on the same then that's line, that's different. So you're going you slide from there to there. That's all you're doing. Right. Which is totally right. Yeah. But you're going from a peninsula. You go around the corner, and you got a big pot. Listen, you could drop it. You could hurt yourself or something. Nothing like pulling a pot filler, and they're a lot less expensive than they, than they were. They like, used to be. Say like eight years ago when they yeah. first came out, they were a couple of grand each. Now you can get some reasonable, and then you get into colors. You go chrome. Standard a kind of oh I shouldn't use the word standard I, I can't believe I even use that no, I can use it standard on a pot filter because it is a standard half inch thread but there is okay. no such thing as a standard sink there ain't no standard sink this everything's different. all the kitchen sinks are different these everything's days. different you know like you know does the kitchen sink have two faucets we've done those too well that, uh, what about long. what about the extra faucets where it's like you got homeowners ask you for hot water dispense yeah room temp dispense yeah i was like what's going filters on filters underneath filters you know there's there's a lot like again so there's, there's no longer like one faucet like at, at the most sometimes you had a soap dispenser but now you got a soap dispenser hot water how about two one. soap dispensers we just posted one why day. Did, why the two one yeah. for more Moisturizer, one for soap? I think it's one's ketchup and one's mustard. I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't really like relish. You know what? Just... That would actually make a lot of sense, man. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm but anyways, you. I think what it is, it's... Uh, Your guests that come by to so go wash their hands and all of a sudden it's they got ketchup hand and cream. My wife does it too. Mayo's over there. <laughs> <laughs> you got a whole condiment station right there. Oh my God. Wouldn't that be so cool? But anyways, I'm you, uh, there's something there, man. Dish soap and uh, hand moisturizer. So just a little after you do dishes, your hands are wet. A little pump of that and um, kind of makes sense until you actually pour the wrong one into the wrong one. It depends if you're if you need moisturizer on your hand. My wife, she's got them all over the place. She's always pumping it. She always likes it like moist and stuff like that. So on my kitchen sink, I got a uh, moisturizer or, everywhere. Yeah. So you know what else is there that's out there these days? I guess. Uh, the motion faucets. Do you like them? I don't. Yeah, so you like them? I keep shutting mine off, so I just put one in. So uh, I don't find this action that hard to do. You know what I mean? I don't. I get it. Your hands are dirty at one moment in your life. Manny, it's a funny story. I'm like three weeks in on this faucet. I keep shutting it off. My son and my wife keep saying, "Who? Ke we keep going like this and nothing's happening. Because <laughs> it's like... Yeah, and so I'm like... So mine isn't a touch; it's a wave. You you just uh, it's you a motion. In, you wave in front it's of it. It's got a little motion. screen, and you just kind of wave something in front of it. And okay, it but up it and has it to be on. the faucet lever has to be on. <clears throat> no, it can be off. You know. Oh, oh sorry. The, yes, it has to be in the temperature and the volume setting that you want. So when you hit it, it's that warm temperature at that volume coming yes, out. Yes. Yes, you have to have it on. So what I keep doing. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, but it's not okay. I got, man, I got 55 years of my life going like this, and now I got to change? So I, I shut it off, and, uh, yeah, the two of them were like, who keeps shutting this off? I'm trying to leave it on. I try to. I they like best. it. They like it. Do they you like, like it? it? I do like it. I, I like both. It, to me, it doesn't really matter. Is it run off batteries or run off of hard lines? It's got a, uh, it's got a battery pack. So the battery thing, I never understood because you have to replace and, and how many times do you want to dig underneath there right. to get and to it? Batteries are you know not really eco-friendly either. Unless yeah. you, you got to dispose of those things. You just squirrel up your batteries. Go to the dump and there you go to that hazard place. You're painting your Where batteries. The paint goes, the just, oil, all that stuff. Let them seal it in a barrel or yes. whatever they do. I don't know what they do. But with if it, you but could hardwire it and plug it in, it's a lot Absolutely. better, right? But you got to remember batteries these days, everything doesn't even take much juice anymore. You put batteries under there. I think I had a customer who said it ran for like two years before it changed. These batteries, you look at them, they stay expiry in 10 years from now. 
I so remember, I, remember, I don't know. I remember Kohler introducing a, a battery activated uh, toilet. Battery. So you, oh, so you would just want motion sensor. Motion sensor. I to thought it was a great it. idea. I thought it was a great idea until they showed me how it got the power. So the battery cartridge was inside the toilet tank. Yeah. And I just said I had to, to them, hide it somewhere. I said, I said, nobody actually wants to lift that up to begin with. Yeah. So why do I want to lift that up and change these batteries six months from now? 100%. And it never really flew in. It, it never didn't continued. fly, man. We, we had, I think we did one. I, I thought it was ingenious when it came I out. I thought it was a great idea. I wanted to put it in every Illumin- one of my Illuminated nighttime, night lights see I like well. night lights. I like the night lights. They're really clever, especially when the sun goes down and yeah. you see it come up. Yeah. The toilet seat. But again, with the toilet, it was battery activated. Yeah. And you had to go into the tank to get it. Yeah. The only time you go into the tank is when you clock something or you have to change an actuator or whatever For sure. I mean, I, I think it was more catered for more convenience for the local tradesmen to have it, but not so much the homeowner. Homeowner don't want to deal with that coming home lifting up the lid on the tank and trying to fish out yeah, that battery we'll do it all the time. We'll probably check it on a weekly basis. See if For it's sure. working fine, eh? If I go to your place, I'm going to lift your lid. You got a battery pack in there? You know, just I'll put look. some new energizers in there. Don't it's, worry. I got them right here. It's the weird thing about us tradesmen. Go to the bathroom or the restaurant and you come back the and rounds, say, hey, did you eh? see that? <laughs> well, you know what? I guess heated seats are becoming the norm. The days uh, are coming the norm. So Are they? Handheld. No? So you got the handheld and you got the seat. I tell people, just get the seat. Put the seat on there. Have some hydro right there. Plug it in. Then you got, not only do you have a warm seat, not only do you have the, the spray, but you have a warm seat, a night light built underneath. You got a fan. You got a blow dryer. You know, like, I mean, these things, fan and blow dryer, same thing. But anyways, the point that I'm saying is it's plug and play. And once it dies. No, it's two different things. They have a fan that sucks the order out and then right. has a blow dryer that actually wipes everything. Right. So that's right. Everything. So it does have the two of them. Yeah. And, you know, with a charcoal filter in there. Yes. So when it sucks it out, it's not stinky yes, and stuff. Yes. And listen, I think it's a great idea because when that thing fails, again, it's mechanical. It will Fail. break one day. It will. Everything, just like brakes on a car. Everything's going to, anything mechanical is going to break down one day. Anyways, the point that I'm saying is you could just unplug it and replace it. Some people don't want that. They want the actual handheld, and they want it. I think it's part of their religion is what they're telling me. I, I've tried to tell them, let's just get the seat. I've but I've had some that's clients more of say, a European thing, eh? maybe they want to reflect the thing. But one gentleman told me it's part of his religion. He cannot use that other seat. He needs a hand. He's physically got to hold it in his hand. Listen, I didn't Google it, and this is what the customer wants, so no problem. Own, I guess, yeah. When he told me he wanted that, I said, listen, you probably just don't want cold water, so why don't I rig up a little mixer and just do a tempered water, so warm water on that handheld. Now, obviously, he's going to blast it for a little bit to get it going, to get the warm going there, but at least it's better than cold. Do you, and some people like that. I just discovered, first of all, about that. Nothing's better than sitting on a warm toilet seat. Oh, 100%. In the 4 o'clock in the morning, cold winter morning. Sure. That's like the best, man. Oh, it absolutely <laughs> is. I mean, like, it's, that's like a heated steering wheel on a car. Yeah. And Why when you, wouldn't you and turn you, it on? And when you take it away and you just sit down and you're like, it's almost the same time, like, you know, I got so used to comfort high toilet seats. Yeah. They should have introduced those things a long time. And then sometimes I go to a friend's house and you sit down and you all of a sudden you drop. Well, the reason is we're bigger people now, right, Manny? That's why it came out in the last little while. Instead of 15-inch bowl, instead of now we're 16 and a half, it's an inch and a half is I know, the number. But that little, makes a you huge think you're difference. falling down to hell. Like oh, it's I just know. like it's a... a I, too. Today I just discovered across the hall here, they have, uh, you know that Aqua... Um, yeah, Aqua. Uh, the hose bib. Uh, the hose bib. Frost-free. They have a hot, cold version now, hydrant that they just launched. Wow, that's awesome. That's really So you great. can have hot water, I guess, outside where you want to wash your car. With wash your water. car or you want the hot water to build a rink in the backyard. You know, you need warm water. So warm why, water. How much is it going to cost you? Just You're going to already have a frost-free hose bib there. And I tell my customers for some of these. I always, and again, I love hire them. the right trade. I think they're great. I, you know, I put two frost-free hose bibs on my, uh, on my job. All of them. When I'm pricing this job, I don't know the people from a hole in the wall. I don't even know if I'm going to get the job, whatever. So I just try to base it on giving them everything they need. And if they want to take away something, I'll take money off. If they want to add something, so we can. Be done. We want to add something. So at the end of the project, you got it. So when we're doing a hose bill, I say, you want a hot and cold in the garage? You know that a lot of them are opting for that hot and cold in the garage? I think it's a brilliant idea. The only thing is, you know what the price tag is? Well, I'm not sure on that spe- specific model. $1,000. Uh, yeah. Uh, no, that's a that's big cha-ching. Yeah, it is big cha-ching. Because even their regular hose bid is like 200 bucks or something like that. 
for their version. For yeah, but you know what? You're also paying for convenience. So yes. that thing is basically you lift a flap, stick the thing in, and shut it off. You don't even have to turn it on. You don't and have off. to drain it. It's live all the time. Yeah, you don't exactly. have to drain it. Yeah. You can pay for convenience. That's all it is. But I, just, I think it's a brilliant idea. So that's what I'm just going at. I'm going at the plumbing. I guess back in the day, it was always just that one valve, one head, one yeah. toe tester. It was so easy to Today, place a job it's back like, in the day. Are a lot of homeowners opting for the steam showers? They are opting for the steam showers, right? We've done four in the last few months, probably. Uh, and they're all in different places. Either steam shower is going to be in the basement or the primary uh, on the second floor. And you know what? It's a half half a dozen one. And it's it's a split right down the middle. There's a lot of people that have their downstairs bathroom. That's where they want the steam. Maybe that's where their gym is, and that's where their that spa makes sense. is. Yeah. Who's got time to come home and go to the gym and the spa and stuff? People are just putting it in their own house. Get a get a a machine workout at home. They're reasonably priced go. now. They are reasonably. Priced. You find the right people that know how to install it. You just got to find a place to put the generator. But yeah, that's all it you is. You need access. You access know, to we, it. We've that's had it. a few people tell us we want it in this little squirrel hole, and I said that's not going to work. It's not going to work. You need you know? bigger space, depending and, on the brand. It's got to breathe too. I've been yeah. to a few callbacks. People were having problems. It was, it was getting too hot, shutting down certain leaks. What's the power consumption on that? Uh, I'm not we, an electrician, but I think you got a you got a little bit. I, I don't know the consumption, it, but that wire going up to it, it draws. She's a big fat. She's a. Big I think fat. it's a 20 amp probably. Oh, I think at least the 20 either, amp. It's oh, going to either be a stove or a dryer. Manny, you got steam in friggin' 10 seconds from cold water. 10 you, seconds. You need power. That steam generator, when that f- thing fires up, I don't know what it draws, but it's a pretty thick wire that the electricians run up to it. But it's instant. You push that button on there, and you've got steam coming. It's a nice, really nice feature. It's a healthy. If you like it. The only thing with the, the primary having the steam is that you are now limited on... Uh, who can use it? Well, it's who can use it. It's, it's full glass enclosure now. Yeah, well, with have, a louver on the top. With a louver. Yeah. But you need to have full glass enclosure, right? And you got to slope the wall. And don't you forget. Gotta, yeah, you've got to slope or curve it. And you know, only some of them, there's only like 10% of them slope the wall. I see them flat and I'm like, oh, man, someone's going to get did a, a phone house. call. We just did a house. The guy's got a window in there with a flat roof and he's got a window in there in the steam. Th- that thing is going to be full of water just dripping down. Yeah. If they Hot run for water. too long. Hot water, absolutely steaming water. Yeah, like steaming hot. That's why sure. it doesn't. Have, it has. It can't be flat. It's got to be curved around an angle. Yeah, because of the drips, right? Right. And we have one house that the homeowner himself went and made sure he put it on a slight angle. He did. He's got Google. Just read. You know, don't leave it up to everybody. But it's, it's a not, design thing, right? They don't want it on an angle because everything else is straight, right? Right. But so, that's why. Pros and cons with everything, you know. A lot of people say to me, you know, I, I don't, I don't want an access panel or something. Well, you know, I got to put one in. If if there's a valve there, you need to service that thing. I'm not going to bury it be, behind the wall. You'll never know it's leaking until it comes through that ceiling uh, below. That that's where the water's dripping. So See, it's you got to do things to code. You got to do it right. It's funny how your world has escalated dramatically regarding what the clients are asking for, but also it's also collided with the electrical world because now in showers you're like getting accent lighting and niches and you're getting all this i love those uh they're uh, beautiful accent looking. lights is really nice yeah. but yeah under the sink i went to go hook up the sink on this last job i got friggin' two transformers you got drivers right over there. you got all kinds of so now you yeah. get limited space and then you've you've perfected your skill on the p-trap and flat against the back and now you got the electricians coming in and they're dropping everything and i'll tell you in all my terms i never those three emails that i need there's no mention of me even asking oh are you doing accent lighting underneath that cabinet i'm not gonna ask because it hasn't been a problem for first off so i'm not gonna yet but i have seen them take up a little bit of space with there we worked around it It was it was fine there was zero issues i mean the some of the the terms on, on my quote I think I'm up to 22 terms that I list. Wow. Yeah. So I don't really share everything with that. But if I'm going to go into a job and I'm going to do your custom house, I want all the information. And if you choose not to give me the information or you choose to change what we agreed upon on the signed quote, like now you want, just say, five toilets instead of four. Obviously, the quote only says there's five. So this is based. We, we, we list everything that we do. Where are they adding another toilet if it's already built a certain way? Well, we got happen? a house that we just did. They had eight, uh, seven bathrooms. They wanted eight. So on the first floor, there was a room. There was a first floor bedroom. And it was a not a very big closet. And they wanted a three-piece in that closet. And they changed it after. And we're doing that job right now. We just finished roughing it in. Now, the room is... 
It's not that big for a three piece. The shower's pretty small. I think the yeah, shower's like thirty three. Yeah. And then there was a joist for the toilet, so we put a wall carrier in there to miss that joist against the wall. So that's uh, thirty six, and it was left with twenty four inches on the side before the wall. So that's the linear. That was tight. Man. That's a, It was a closet. Yeah. That's they wanted tight. a three piece in there, so you know, two piece would be different. You'd have a little more room, but they also wanted the shower. So I think the shower worked out to about thirty two for a width by the. Uh, uh, 32 width and the length of that uh, shower was probably it's probably 60 inches so 5 feet maybe just a little smaller no it was about 4 feet it was a smaller one because it was a closet I think it was about uh, 4 feet um, anyways it looks pretty doable and stuff and you know it gets done what's the best part for you Sam like is it still the same getting best paid. part getting <laughs> paid is it really I love getting paid <laughs> getting paid for the skill that you've done you know what the best part is, is when you've finished your work and the customer or the GC recognizes the blood and sweat and tears you put in on this job and the after hours you put it on it, you, you submit a, a, a the quote or a draw on the job and they pay you within five business days. You know what? That That's really nice. They can, they can, it's very much. And doing something like that for a small business, a blue collar worker, just give me my money. Like... I've invested thousands and thousands of dollars over the last few weeks and stuff. Here's the bill to get it done. Paying somebody um, in in a week's time is very admirable. They don't have to, and you know, but it just goes a long way for us hard workers. You know, just pay you. Agree. So that's the best part in terms of payment. But the best part is really looking back and completing the job from a hole in the ground. And these people moved in and there's not one complaint. Yeah. I don't like that the shower head's over there. I don't like that the sink is, you know, spray. There's none of that because we talked it all out. The final product, they're happy. And now I'm starting to ask for a Google review. Just just say a couple words. Say thanks, you know. Uh, that's all we ask for. Are and they being receptive? I've just started. I've yeah. just started. I want to make it easy for them. I want to find like a link. Yeah. It is. You, people are busy and I don't want to bug them. I might ask. But it helps you. It goes back to blue collar, mom and pop business. Mom and it's pop business. small business My owner. wife's helping me at night. Yeah, I got my right? three sons with me. Exactly, right? Uh, and I have my apprentice that came last year. He's just coming up to a first year. I call him my 0.5 year apprentice because he's so new. Okay. He's, he hasn't even got a 0.5. year. 0.5. Well, it's not one. I think it's coming up in May. But anyways, he's doing great. And again, it's a small family business. And so try these to, little things, they help. They, they just help, right? Absolutely. Because we don't have those little things. You know what that spurs? It spurs a phone call, an email. Hey, are you doing this? You're doing that? All that time and money. You know where that comes from, Manny? From my profit. Yeah. I got it. I, I, I have a little bit of profit at the end of the job. And when I don't know what sync you're doing or what's happening, it costs me time and money. Profit, man. Yeah, man. You know, like you want to, you want to, we're a for profit business. We don't want to give it away. And we're also building in 2024. And you start to build right now. You know what? That project's going to finish in 2025. So you better price accordingly. These guys undercutting everybody by a couple of grand here and there. Not paying attention to, to where the market's going with material costs. No. Also, no. whatever. You got. Business insurance renewals happening, vehicle insurance renewals happening. You just got renewals, all kinds of stuff. Absolutely. You're not factoring that things are going up. You're no. losing profit. In fact, that insurance is right now has been steadily going up every year. It I has just to. had I just had this conversation with my insurance broker and you know, he told me the, the new number for it. And again, I think it's about two fifty, maybe three twenty five more on the year, and I'm like how is this keep going up? They're doing it. They're just sneaking. They're I just know. Sneaking it in. So he says, you know, let me take a look at it. I'll look into the market. Comes back about a week and a half later. Says, you know, I checked it out. Other guys are more money. The best to stay where you are. What do you say? Okay. That's I, all you can say. I. We are fully insured. We have all our tickets. We're yeah, current with everything. To. You have to because of what you're walking it. into. Exactly. Hundred percent. If something happens, the the liability attached to that something is too great. Yeah, way, way too, too great. great. Right. So it's like, do you think it's easier, Sam, today, for a plumber to start and build the same way that you built it 34 years ago? You think it's easier today, or was it easier back then? To, sorry, can you say the question to, again? To, to start a business, to go on your own as a plumber, start your business. And start, make it, make money. And, and make money from it. You think it's easier today to use the tools of today. And I guess I'm, you're encompassing social media. And, you know, you, let's say you're, you're both the same level of plumber. 
you're getting started at the exact same time, but two different time zones. You guys hopped into a DeLorean, mm -hmm. and you went back, and all of a sudden you're comparing notes, and you're going, was it easier then? <coughs> was it because it was, like, me, more relationships with builders or something like that? Or is there, like, more building opportunities today? I don't know. I don't well, know if it's easier. I don't know what, what the right answer is for that. Well, I, I'm going to say I don't know what the right answer is either. And just from brainstorming my head from you asking me that question, I think anybody can make it if they do it great. And yeah. what I mean by doing it great is you know that if you cut corners, you, you it's not going to be that great. And they, you could get a callback. So I think... Callbacks cost money. Callback costs money and they cost your name. I built the name Sam the Plumber. Just give us the prints. Tell me what you're interested in. Tell me your thoughts. I'm not a mind reader. Just tell me everything and let's discuss it. And I'll tell you. But at the end, I always tell them, you're, you, you will make the final decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. You will make the final decision. But anyways, for somebody starting off, you know, the tools are... The tools out there today is really making people and their jobs so much easier. There's some of these tools. If you invest in it, I, I'm Team Red. We have invested in that platform, which is the M18 and the M12. Yeah, Everything sense. runs on it, and it works really good for us and stuff. So with the right tools and the passion, if you have it, to do it right and don't screw these customers, you can make it, but it's going to be a slow journey. Somebody told me a long time ago, this is a true story, He's a good friend of mine. He's my best friend, actually. And he's got probably 22 electricians. They're not subs. They actually work under his name. Wow. He's, he does some pretty amazing stuff and goes around uh, North America fixing stuff. But the point, he said to me when I first started my business, he said, Sam, it's a 10-year learning curve. And I said to him, 10-year, yeah, well, I'm thinking in my mind 10-year, maybe three-year, four years. Man, I'm still learning today. Ten years. I got sixteen. I, agree with them. I got sixteen years in, Manny. I'm still learning today, and I try to just refine it. Hence, the reason why we have a few terms. Just tell us we want the fixture book. We want an appliance specs. You know, um, we want a few things, and we want to make it a perfect, successful job, so that you're happy, and I make a little bit of a profit. The bills are paid. The boys are paid. And a I make a little profit to hold on to because that's what I'm doing. Yeah. We're not a dot of work. We're a for-profit business, but at a fair price. I'm not going to get rich off one job and go get my Porsche. <laughs> I know if I say that, you catch you laughing. I'm not, because you plumbers and Porsches, not, man. I'm I know you, you say man. that. I'm more of a Ferrari guy uh, myself, but whatever. <laughs> you know what? I love the fact that I'm seeing tradespeople buying their toys that they want to buy. They should. They, they work should. hard. You should have those opportunities to buy these toys if you can. It's not hurting anybody, and if it's not costing a marriage, then by all means do it. Yeah. But you should. I'd encourage if it's a boat, if it's an exotic car, if it's a motorcycle, if it's a, a chalet somewhere. If it's yeah, another you're gonna home get peace of mind. You're gonna be happy. Your life just, is gonna be happy. You, you know, worked hard like you're for missing that. Something. You yeah. were, you were on site in the mud trenches, running glue all over you. Whatever. You were working hard. Yeah. You deserve it. Yeah. Your family deserves it. For right? sure. Without it, you might be thinking you're missing out on something in life and then you become grumpy and then you say, you know what? Screw this customer. I'm going to save 200 bucks by not. I'm going to get some inexpensive stuff and put it in there. There is inexpensive short material. Short crap. It's, it's short term just, crap. Yeah. You're going to get, something's going to let go, you know, and he might be able to ride it to say he knew it was going to fail. He might be able to ride it and say, oh, it's going to, you know, do this. But Listen, that's somebody who's not fair. And I, I think most that. people are fair people. Most trades guys, they want, they're, they, they're hardworking people. They get up at 6 o'clock. They're on site early. They're working hard every day. Yeah. And some might charge more than others, and some might charge a little bit less. And it doesn't matter what vehicle they do. I started off in a car, my first one. My minivan came. My Astro minivan came. Astro. I, I wish I still had it. Was it was it? white. I was lucky I found a white one. But I love that thing. I overloaded that thing. This rear suspension, you know the coils? Oh, well, those, yeah, those are basically pickup trucks, man, with a box on it. That's so, buddy, it's, you know why they got rid of those? Why? That, they that had so much V6, room. that V6 engine was basically like a V8. All they did was chop off the two pistons on the end, and that engine was bulletproof. They realized that these things are going to keep running for years. They got rid of them so they could... Uh, sell the full size trucks, which were more money and stuff, and you got the V8s and the bigger engines and stuff. But those Astros. Another great move by GM. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good old GM for that one. But, anyways, yeah, you show up in your car, you're going to work. You're a hard worker. You're going to do what you can. Just don't screw anybody out of their money. Just tell them, listen, you can go, you can pick anybody you but, want to, but, but just be fair. But, Sam, why is it that most of the time I hear about trades, and I've done this too? is we always take the high road. So even though we're getting screwed over, we're taking the high road, 
I'll take care of it. I'll finish it. I'll eat the cost. I'll, like, why is it that we always have to? Because you want that the next job. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a three hundred dollar extra. We got to catch job. our train. <laughs> we got to catch our plane. Yes. No. <laughs> exactly. You know, but no, I know. It's just, it's like I always feel that I, I, I'm indifferent about it because the thing is, like, I do it too. Yeah, but you know, at the end of the day, what's three hundred dollars if you're going to get another job from that's that GC? Exactly. That's that exactly one, I got it. one GC. He says, Sam, I don't want to go back. To Same customer. with the subs. I'm working with the subs. I'm right. like, I, I'm relying on you guys. You yeah. guys are delivering what I need to get done. Right. Absolutely. And you know what? Sometimes you suck it up, and I know a lot of us do it so many times. But one thing I always tell people: if you sucked it up, and if you did it for free. That's great, but let them know that you did it. I have one elderly GC that I admire that we've talked to, uh, we've talked many, many times and done a few projects together. And one time he said to me, and I was, you know, I did a few free work, uh, did some free stuff there, and I didn't tell him he didn't know about it. And then one day I said, you know, I've done this for free, done that free. Why don't you want to pay this bill? You know what he said to me? He goes, Sam. I didn't even know you did those other two things free. If you do something free, you've got to tell the person. Tell them, say, listen, I'm, I'm not going to charge you for this, but I did it for free. You make sure you tell the people that because they need to know. So what True. happens is there's other things that build from that. So you get True. the one freebie and the other one, hey, listen, you're going to have to pay for this one. It's just a fair thing. It's 100% fair. I want to ask you, how is it working with the Suns? Um, is it good and bad or is it... I'm going to tell you one thing. They're probably going to listen to this. For sure. I'm going to tell you, I love it. It's a dream come true for me. Okay. Yeah, of course we have our ups and downs. Do we yell at each other or something? Not often, but it does happen. Sometimes we butt heads and stuff, but it's only because they're being, they're, they're only being themselves. And, yes. And everybody needs to be themselves. But for me, listen, working with my three sons is a dream come true. I thought about it long, long, long time ago. And I said, no, it's never going to happen. Never going to work, right? Never going to happen. Yeah. How would I... I'm a dreamer, but that would be cool. And then it happened. You know, I got the first son, and then the second son came, and then son number three came, and he is imminent to being licensed. Um, he's going to write his test. He's finished all his schooling. He's got his diplomas and stuff. So the third and final son, uh, m God willing, may be licensed uh, sometime soon. Nice. And um, I think for me, it's really great. They keep telling me, you don't need to come in, Dad. But I like to, I like to put the boots on and go into the morning, get there, and just turn up the radio. Then I go on Instagram and they take pictures. You can be the social media guy. Don't worry, we'll take care of everything. It's a part-time job, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> you should get a cardboard cutout of yourself and put it on the job site uh, there. So you no way, I'm going to be there. Sam's still watching. I'd r I'd rather be on site than sitting at home doing paperwork any day. No, but I, anyways, is it I eventually going to step back? Is it moment. eventually going to become Sam's sons and? Plum I mean, like, um, I'm going to probably say never. Okay. It's always going to be Sam the Plumber. That yeah. name that I've built is, is Huge. a stamp. Yeah. It's a stamp just to it's let a people brand. know. It's a brand, man. Yeah. And you know what? I'm an ambassador for a few brands and stuff, and I will put the name out there. But the first and foremost brand is my brand. Yes. I'm not going to be that mule that you think you're... You're going to give me, what, like 50 bucks and do something. I'm kind of downplaying it and stuff like that. But it has to be a mutual thing. Any business, any great business is two sides. Yep. A lot of people call me. I still get it today. Hi, I need a quote for a house. That's all I got. I got in, you know, it's in our region. I'm interested. But I always tell them. I, I, I send them like four questions. Send me your first and last name. Give me the name of the GC and the business address and or the website. Let me see the prints and let me know for the last, which is most important. Let me know the rough scheduled date for the completion of framing. Those are four I mean, if solid questions. Yeah. So listen, if they're going to do it next week, I'm going to say, I'm not even going to price your job because I'm friggin' busy. I yeah. can't do it. So usually they get back to me and they'll answer the questions and say who we are and stuff like that. And then you get the ones that don't. They give you the, their address is the, biz, is the project address. You got one first name and that's it. You know what those people are? They're just fishing. Of course. And they say, why do you, I've had people say to me, why do you need all that information? And I said. That's not a whole lot of information. Sir, you were able, do you know I'm a family business with my th three sons? And he goes, of course I do. I checked you out. You, I see that you've done a lot of jobs. I see what you do. Well, I said, the business side of it, I need to see what you've done. Yes. I don't know if this is your first house. Are you building it? Yes. You know, I need to see, I want to check you out. And if you don't want to tell me where you live, 
Can you imagine if you owe me 500 bucks and I don't, I got a project address? You're already of something like this? flags, man. Come on. Like, just give me the info. You want to see my stuff? Let me see your stuff. It, it has to be a mutual agreement. It's a two-way street. You know, it might sound like I'm coming across as a little bit demanding and stuff, but I'm nope. telling you, this, the, the, this is the standard that people don't know. You need to know the other side of the business to have a proper business side. You need these emails. We're going in to build a custom house. We're not building a shed in the backyard that it's going to be standard. <laughs> Just go build. Let me know where Speaking all Speaking of which, is. you ever put water in a shed? Yeah, sure. I'm hose sure someone's going to ask whatever. you a hose bib, I guess, or something like that. Yeah, you Pool might need a cappuccino machine over okay, there. That's the, what I mean. Cabana starts getting yeah, built listen, on. The cabanas with the wall-hung toilets, I've done those too. A cabana with a wall-hung toilet? Yeah, we've done two in the last little while. Yeah, for you sure. You like wall-hungs? I don't like wall-hungs. I only like Geberit as the carrier for the wall-hungs. Now, listen, I'm, it's, it's about what it. The architect or the framer may, somebody have, may make a mistake, and they put a joist right on that line that we need to rough in that 13-inch toilet. Now, I know there's 10-inch rough-ins, 12-inch uh, rough-ins, and 14-inch rough-ins. You can change them. The standard's 12. You're going to pay big bucks for some other kind of thing. But there's no when there's a joist it. there, instead of getting the framer back to move the joist, just put it in the wall, put a carrier in the wall, and just put a bowl. You can use, Geberit, you can use, they only make carriers. They don't make bowls. Then you can grab American Standard, Kohler, um, any kind of brand. And it will attach to it? It's completely convertible to all other bowls. Oh, I didn't know that. You can buy any one, whatever cover plate and whatever uh, bowl you want, you can pick that. There's many options. I'm seeing the guys now, they're actually pulling off the porcelain cover plates. They're making them all CNC'd in and... So it's like it's we did one that was glass. Cool. We yeah. did one that was glass. I think the guy glass. said it was glass. I think he paid like uh, three hundred fifty bucks for this uh, thing, or maybe it was more than that. Anyway, fingerprints on it. All we the put time. it on, but it clicked like crazy. What a sound! Click, 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 click. Anyways, he said take it off. <laughs> he didn't want it on there. Everybody's going to hear one. you click, click. click yeah, click, you, right? it, it was a little bit on the loud side. But it was the first and only one that we saw. But yeah, there's many options as well as colors for that stuff. I just. I'm There's not a huge fan. They move a little bit. Like it's just mine don't move. They don't move at all. Not if it's a Gerberit. You get an offshore wall carrier that have had plumbers reach out to me. Say, Sam, I got flex behind there. It's flexing like an eighth or a and quarter it inch. Move, eh? the mine don't fit move in a, in a two by four cavity, or you need a two, two by, by four. You don't need the two by six. You don't need a two by. It's if they're going to sell you a two by six because they bought it like a few years ago and they're trying to get rid of it, that's what they're probably just doing. Just put it in a two by four wall. Most walls are two by four, and you can stick a two by four carrier in a two by six wall. But you can't do the vice versa. And Geberit is the only one that can offset. So sometimes it's not yeah. a matter of going this way. Sometimes the joist goes the other way. Yeah. And then Geberit is the only carrier that you're allowed to swing it on any angle you want. It could be 45 degrees going through on an angle. Miss the joist and you I've plane out. I've seen that. I've seen that. Yeah. We've got around that. Some of that, like a Kohler, you can't. Uh, that's nope. going straight down. Yep. So if there's a joist there and you want that Kohler carrier, you got to move the joist to get that carrier in there. So... There's many options out there. What are you looking forward to at the show here, man? I'm looking forward to going to see my son. I'm pretty proud of him. Yeah. He's uh, over there at the social hub with all. Is he the, hanging uh, out there? What's with the bars? He's uh, you got the younger guys all down there, They're younger guys and girls. There. Yeah, for sure. But I'm pretty proud of him. Tyler from Plumbers World. He's down there at the social hub. Yep. I'm going to go see him for a little bit. Say yep. hi to a few people. But uh, I think the highlight of the show was seeing all these people and being on this show with you. Thanks, so man. you know. Well, I'm glad that you can make some time. It's always a blast to see you and talk shop. And yeah. I, I can always talk shop with you guys, man. Yeah, that's great. So thanks so much. I really appreciate it taking. You're the time, always man. you're always welcome to come by on the oh, site. If you want to see on. finishing or rough in or whatever stage, you text me. Let me know. I'll stop by. Come when you, I'm doing underground. I got an extra shovel and I'll give you. And you can help. Me. <laughs> I'll do it. Yeah, I'm not you kidding you. I'll do it, man. Yeah. Sam, pleasure having you. Thanks so My much, pleasure. man. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. We'll talk thanks soon. Very much. Take care.